This is the video I never wanted to make. But in the back of my head, I always thought that something like this could happen to our family. Simply a tragic accident. And a tragic accident. This is absolutely a tragic accident. We had a horrific and tragic boating accident involving our little girl, Sunny. A six-year-old little girl is dead after being hit by a boat. Our worst nightmare came true. It's really hard to see some of these video clips, news articles, and even make this video. One might ask, how could this even happen? Well, here's how it happened. We had a wonderful family out on the boat with us. One thing that we've always done since we've had a boat is shared that with other people. I honestly made a promise with God that if he allowed me to have a boat in my life, I would share it with other people. I've been blessed with a couple different boats in my life and I've stayed true to that promise. As a family, we've shared our boat with others. This day was no different. This was the first time our families had been together and we always use the boat as an easy way to get introduced to people or to help them have a really fun experience on the lake on a boat. Something I had to get used to when moving down here to Arizona and having kids is having swim breaks. It's so hot here that everyone needs to get in the water every now and then just to keep cool. When I was growing up, it was always the next person that was ready to get skiing or wakeboarding and they were just in and it was just over and over and over as quick and as efficient as you possibly could be. That's not the case here in Arizona and it's also not the case with little kids. Little kids need to get in and enjoy some of the time in the water, not just sit there in the boat the whole time. So swim breaks has been a wonderful thing for our family. I was going to teach somebody how to wake surf but I had never wake surfed on this particular wake, wake surf board. I had just bought it brand new, and so I needed to ride it just for honestly five to 10 seconds just to see what it was like surfing, where to place my feet, and just everything about it. In about 10 seconds, I could have figured that out, and then I was gonna teach him how to wake surf. So I got in the water, and I was ready to go. And right after I got up, about five to 10 seconds after I got up, I heard Sunny screaming, and she. I looked back, and she was in the water. And in my brain, I thought, there's no way that we ran over her. There's no way that this is possible. I kept telling myself she was just next to the boat or beside the boat and she's just screaming because we left her, she needs help. So I started swimming back to her, not with any like urgency because I really did not, didn't think anything was wrong. I just thought, oh, we'll pick her up, put her in the boat and we'll just keep having our awesome day. I think I was telling myself that because I didn't want the reality to be true. Everything sunk in a little bit that it was this crazy and horrible experience that happened. Camille, while I was swimming, drove the boat, turned it around and got back to where Sunny was. Saw Sunny and she just started screaming. She dove in from the boat to try to help and save Sunny. Right when she got in the water, she exclaimed, somebody call 911, please, somebody call 911. At that point, I knew that this was serious and there was a huge problem. I swam, got to Sunny. I told Camille to get back to the boat so that we could get Sunny into the boat. And I swam our daughter to the back of the boat. I got a hugger and I got to kiss her. And I got to say her name a couple more times. And I kissed her on the cheek. And we got her out of the water on the back of the boat. And right there, we knew that uh, she was gone. She was struck by the prop and the injuries were so bad that there was no chance for survival. The doctor told us later on that the injuries she sustained from the accident were not survivable there was no way that we could have saved her. She died in a matter of a couple minutes, maybe even less from the time of the accident. We sat there in shock. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't know if we were supposed to drive or not drive. We didn't have cell service, so we asked another boat to go up the lake and try to get cell service. And then eventually we just started driving back to the dock. Everybody in shock in the whole boat. So this is now our reality. Our little Sonny is no longer with us. Right after the accident, when Camille and I were trying to analyze exactly what happened, we couldn't remember 
if she ever got in the boat when we had had that swim break. When we had asked everybody to get back in the boat, we don't know if she actually got back in the boat. Later on though, Camille remembered Sunny getting in the boat and she had a conversation with her. Sunny said, is it my turn yet? And what she was asking is, it, is it my turn to do something behind the boat? Now, you have to understand this. When we take other people out on our boat, we always let our kids know, hey, we're taking this other family out. All the focus of activities behind the boat is going to be on them. They get to do things first, not us as a family. We get to go out to the lake all the time. But when we take somebody else out, they are priority. They get to do things first. And so we say, remember, don't ask, is it my turn, is it my turn? Because they all get to go before any of us get to go behind the boat. So when Sonny had come in the boat and asked, hey, is it my turn? Camille kindly reminded her, hey, we brought this other family. It's not your turn yet. And Sonny had said something to the effect like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. Okay, okay. It's not my turn yet. Another thing you have to know is Camille does not remember stuff. She does not remember stuff in the short term of very specific things that happen or very specific conversations that happen. This is out of the norm for Camille to remember this. When Camille reminded me of this conversation, I remember that this conversation took place. I was on the boat and I was talking with somebody else, but out of the corner of my eye and out of my external hearing or whatever it is, I don't know, I, I heard that conversation and I remember Sonny getting in the boat and having that conversation with Camille. And I remember exactly where we were on the lake when we had that conversation. We believe that God reminded Camille of that conversation so that both of us can know at the end of the swim time or the end of the swim break, she got in the boat. She actually listened to us and she got back in the boat. But sometime from that conversation with Camille to when I started getting up on the wake surfboard, she somehow got back in the water and we don't know what happened. We don't know how it happened, but we just know that it happened. Accidents happen just in normal life. Accidents happen in things we participate in all the time, every single day. Walking, riding a bike, driving a car, flying in an airplane. We evaluate the risk, we understand the risk, and then we adjust our actions accordingly. Camille and I are very safe boaters. Given the accident, you might question that statement. I've even questioned it myself, and we've questioned it together as a couple. Would people ever even want to be back on the boat with us? When we can't even keep our own daughter safe? We have some unwritten rules between Camille and I, specifically about boat safety. As an example, one of us has to be on the boat at all times, especially during a swim break. We need a competent operator of the boat in the boat at all times, just in case if the boat drifts away or if somebody needs attention or help that's in the water, we have to have an operator on the boat that's proficient and knows what to do in any situation. People that visit on our boat sometimes think that it's weird that everyone jumps in the water and I'm the only one still on the boat, not in the water. But it's this unwritten rule that we have about safety that Camille and I both know, so then she'll get out of the water and then I can hop in the water and have a little bit of reprieve from the heat. But both of us are never off the boat at the same time. We have another rule that we adopted from another family called cheeks on the seat. And that means butt cheeks on the seat. Anytime the boat's underway, we, kids are not standing up, they're not on their knees, their butt cheeks are on the seat. And that's so that no child or no person ends up accidentally falling out of the boat, cheeks on the seat, always, and we're vigilant about it. We tell people, guests on our boat, our kids, we always remind them, cheeks on the seat. Even if I'm just a passenger or a rider, I never relinquish my duties or responsibilities as a captain. I still have my eye out about what's going on in the boat, or even what's going on around the boat. There's times that I'm a rider and I'll be like, hey, there's a boat here, or you need to turn here or do stuff. I never relinquish that. I am always have that obligation or that duty that I feel for those people that come out with us to keep them safe and protected. Drugs or alcohol were not present or involved in this accident. That's not something that we choose to do within our personal life anyways, and it's sure as heck something that we don't mix with boating. Some people might even think that our rules are over the top or excessive. My point is this accident didn't happen because we were intoxicated or because we were unfamiliar with safe boating practices. This happened despite the fact that we are experienced boaters and we have systems in place to protect us and our passengers. If you have the attitude of this could never happen to me or I'm more observant, this could never happen to me, then you're wrong. And this is a blind spot in your abilities. This is something that could happen to anyone. There are inherent risks when boating. And I've always tried to do things that will mitigate those risks. 
All accidents are preventable, but accidents still happen. I've often pondered how I would feel in a situation just like this. I hear of other people losing kids in kind of dramatic ways. We do almost like a brain exercise where I put myself in someone's shoes and see how I would feel and see what I would think. I figured everyone does this, but the more that I talk to people, not very many people actually do this. And people are surprised that I've even done it. Camille has also done it. In maybe a weird way, I think it was God preparing us for something traumatic like this to happen. Despite this horrible situation, here are some things that I'm thankful for about Sunny's life and about her death. I'm thankful that I got to have six wonderful years with Sunny. Of those six years, four of them, I was a content creator, YouTuber, whatever you want to say, so I worked from home. And I probably spent more time with her in those four years than most dads get to see their daughter in 18 years. And that I'm really thankful for. I'm thankful for her hugs and her smiles. And I'm thankful for the trust that she gave me. She did a lot of crazy things because I was there riding her bike. I saved her a couple different times, doing things on the trampoline, swimming, jumping off the boat, jumping off the sides of pools, doing flips into pools, all these things that she trusted me. I'm thankful that the morning of the accident, I was going to wake everybody up to get them ready to get on the boat and go to the lake. And she hid in the laundry room behind the door and I couldn't find where she was. It didn't make sense. So I went in the laundry room to grab something and she jumped out from behind the door and she scared me. And then she just started laughing. And then when we got to the lake, I was going to throw some trash away. She was also throwing some trash away while we were waiting for the family to come out to the boat. And we stopped and I gave her a little hug. And she said, that was so fun that I, I scared you this morning. And I said, yeah, you really got me really good because she did. She scared me pretty good. And just gave her a little hug there in the parking lot at the lake. And those things are special. Uh, I'm also thankful that I was there when she died. Um, because I could have been somewhere else. I could have not been there. I, there's many different things that could have happened and other parents that I've talked to that they weren't there when their kid actually died. And, and I'm thankful, maybe in a weird way, but that I was there with her. And I got to give her one last hug and one last kiss and tell her that I love her. Now, you might wonder, what does this mean for this channel? And for me, that's a great question. But I think a question I have back at all of you is, would you even want to watch content about boating and about boating safety from someone like me who had such a fatal accident happen under my watch as a captain? That's something that I've contemplated a lot and I honestly still don't have an answer to it. But I still feel compelled and I want to put out content to help you become a better boater and to create lasting memories with your family and friends. If you've noticed, I've shut all of the comments off on all of my videos. Following the accident, I started getting some hateful comments specifically about the accident. Normally, I leave up all comments, even hateful comments about myself. I'm a big enough person and if you wanna tear me down and tell me you don't like how I look or whatever, I'm fine with it. I typically just try to respond with love and uh, respond in a upbeat and positive manner. That's kind of who I am. When I started getting hateful comments specifically about the accident, it seemed like it was another level. It was dealing with the death of my daughter. I will turn the comments back on on all of my videos. I'll probably curate them a little bit more and I really want this to be a positive community. I don't want it to be a community where we tear each other down or tear people down. Um, so at my discretion, if I think that what you're saying is not helpful or not positive in a way, then I will probably remove that. I'm just in a place that I don't really want to deal with some of those attacks from a keyboard warrior. To honor Sunny and her legacy, you may have known me as the Blake Days channel. This channel is no longer going to be the Blake Days channel. It will be the Sunny Days channel. I realize that might make some confusion because we spelt her name S-U-N-N-I. 
instead of S-U-N-N-Y. However, she's so important to me and I just want to honor her and her legacy. So this is now going to be the Sunny Days YouTube channel. It's perfect. What do you want to do on a sunny day? Be at the lake. Sunny is literally her name. She is bright and beautiful and always made others feel special. She is an excellent example of Jesus Christ by always showing love to others. That's really what she was. Her name fit her perfectly. She was Sunny. She is a bright light and will continue to be so. This is the hardest thing we've ever gone through in our life. And we don't wish this upon anyone. Our worst nightmare came true and it's awful. I really want to just say thank you to all of your support and we could really use some prayers right now. God is good and I know he loves us. Please subscribe to help support us. I love this community that's been created around boating. I love you guys. Shine bright and I'll see you in the next video.